Hi and welcome to my channel. I've not made any training videos this weekend because it's been way too hot to be outside. But I thought I'd share this video with you instead. It's a video of Melissa Bubs Barbieri and how much she's been through to get to where she is now today. It's very inspirational. I also play for Glenara Bubs so she means a lot to me. Bye! I fought against a lot of people because they told me that I was a boy with long hair. And I loved the things that girls love to do. I love to sing, I love to dance, but I also love to play all the sports. So when I wanted to play soccer for a team outside of school, suddenly I was in trouble. Everybody said, no, you can't because you're a girl. These things have changed now. Anybody can play whatever they like. So when I went home and I said to my parents, I want to play soccer, they said, well, we can try, but I don't know if that you'll be allowed. So I made a real nuisance of myself. I went to training, every training, and I just turned up. And I said, I'm ready to play. Can I join in? And I made such a nuisance of myself that the coach said, OK, you can come and sit on the bench. By the time, you know, the game was playing and I was, so, I was having so much fun sitting there, um, and the coach turned to me with about 10 minutes to go and, the, and he said, Melissa, on you go. I didn't know what to do, but really what happened was I fell in love. People laughed at me when I turned up, but you know what? It just made me want to do it even more. Hi, I'm here at Kudjan Primary School and I'll be chatting to the kids today. I just like to come out to the schools and really give inspirational talks to the kids because it's, a, it's an amazing part of my career that I have gone through so much. And a lot of the kids can see that I've been to World Cups and Olympic Games, but none of them really know the full story about all the things that have gone wrong in my career and ultimately has pushed me to make me stronger and better as a person and ultimately a better athlete. And when they hear the stories about all the failures in my career, it probably makes them a little bit more in inclined to try new things, to make mistakes so that they can learn from them and become better people, better athletes, and strive for bigger successes in their careers. So after under 10s, it was registration time, and you had to become part of the big team. So they banned me from playing. Nobody would let me play because I would get hurt. They thought they were protecting me, but really, it was called discrimination. So I kind of forgot about football for a little while, up until I was about 14, and I was, I was getting a bit frustrated with basketball, and I was very frustrated with tennis until my mum said to me, you remember you were pretty good at soccer? And I turned to her and I said, mum, girls don't play soccer. And she's like, of course they do, Melissa. Back in the day when you were trying to, they were a little bit closed-minded. And I said, well, <laughs> what have I been doing for the last six years? So I started up again. And this time I went there and the clumsiness that I first started with when I was a kid, it was gone. I didn't realise how good I was until I got called up to the Australian team at 16. Whoa. Everybody was faster, fitter, stronger than me. And I thought, what am I going to do? And I was really tired, but I tried to eat really well and I tried to do all the right things, get a lot of sleep. But I just wasn't up for it. I didn't make the team. I was about 20. I didn't realise that I'd made a mistake, that I hadn't trained hard enough when I was sitting in front of uh, the TV and I was watching the 2000 Olympics, the opening ceremony, and I saw people walking across the screen in the opening ceremony, and I'm like, wow, they look familiar. And they weren't familiar because they were famous. They were familiar because I'd played against them. <gasps> and then I knew I'd made such a mistake. I thought, okay, how fast were they? How strong were they? How much did we train? And I tried to replicate that. And I trained so hard, guess what happened? I got injured. So I'm in the surgeon's office, and the surgeon says to me, I'm sorry, but you have to quit football. And I said, why? He says, well, in soccer you run around, and when you're running around, it hurts this injury. And we don't know what it is, and we can't fix it. And I said, well, how about I just stop running around? And I became a goalkeeper. And I found it very difficult, but once again, I was clumsy. I didn't know what I was doing. I had no idea how to be a goalkeeper. 
but I asked for help and I got better. And within a year, I was back in the national team. Within two years, I'd made the Australian team full squad and debuted for my country in 2002. In 2003, I went to my first World Cup. And in 2004, I went to my Olympic Games. So in 2007, I went to my second World Cup. 2008, I'll be 28 in the Olympic Games. Guess what happened? The team didn't qualify. Did I give up? Of course not. How can I get better from here? What do I need? I'm number one goalkeeper. What's next that I can do? I become captain in 2010. I captained my country to my third World Cup. 2012, Olympic Games, Beijing, uh, London. What happened? I go, but as a spectator. We don't qualify, again. So I have my daughter, Holly, in 2013. Do I quit after having Holly? No. But what happens when everybody tells me that mums can't play soccer anymore? makes me want to play soccer even more. They gave me goosebumps because it's exactly what happened. And then they told me, you're not going to the next World Cup. And I said, okay, I'll train even harder. The whole year they said, you're not going. I played against USA in the first game in the World Cup. And I was proud because I'd done everything that everybody had told me that I couldn't. 